In London's historic Mayfair, a new charity is launching in Thomas Goode by kind invitation of owner and philanthropist Rumi Vergi. TENT, an acronym for the European Nature Trust, will work to ensure the protection of some of the last great wild areas in Europe. We hope to connect a lot of people who probably don't know much about the real emergencies that face us. We've, in Europe, focused our interests in many other parts of the world, but in Europe we still have our own amazing creatures. People don't actually know a great deal about what's on their doorstep. You don't really cast your mind just east a couple of hundred miles into the centre of Europe. Amazonian rainforest, everybody knows about it, but so few people really recognise what's going on on our own doorstep, and that's our mission. Goodness, we really have to do our damnedest to, to make people aware, particularly in Europe, that just how fragile the remaining wildernesses are. The Carpathian Mountains of Eastern Europe are amongst the largest area of untouched wilderness on the continent. They remain a refuge for a huge range of spectacular animal and plant life. Tent's founder, philanthropist and conservationist Paul Lister is a strong proponent of the environmental movement. We still have some amazing biodiversity left in the Carpathian Mountains. I kind of call it that, like the Yellowstone of Europe. The Carpathian Forest is the last virgin forest of any meaningful size that is now under threat to be, to be cut. The Carpathian Mountains stretch across Romania, Ukraine, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary and the Czech Republic. They boast over half the continent's population of bears, wolves and lynx. But since the fall of communism, this vast area of untouched forests face an imminent threat. This is a firefighting exercise now. Um, in Romania, huge areas of forest have been removed as lands have been restituted to the heirs of former owners. To them it represents manna from heaven. There's a, there's a very rapid cash flow opportunity and they tend to sell them on to the logging companies. And the result is they get clear felled with no real appreciation of their value. The reason I love Romania is it's what England was 300 years ago and we recognise it and we recognise what we've lost. Gathered at the event are some of the world's most influential eco-philanthropists. These men and women give up their time and resources on an impressive scale to help conserve our planet. Amongst them are Doug and Chris Tompkins. These world-leading eco-philanthropists and entrepreneurs have dedicated their lives to preserving and restoring two and a half million acres of wilderness in Chile and Argentina. If there's going to be any civilization in the future, we're going to have to see that the planet is alive and well. Of course, we're immersed in a tremendous eco-social crisis. We now realize that. How to get out of it? That's, of course, an enormous uh, question. Some people may be using their political influence. Other people may be using their fortunes and their, their financial resources. Others are using their thinking. There's, there's ways to contribute all the way along the line. What's always fascinating, when we talk about philanthropy, it's not just about giving money that we want from, from these kind of people. They've got so much more to give. And when you add entrepreneurialism to philanthropy, you can have a real double whammy. Philanthropy is an investment of social capital. It's about playing to your best strengths. Tent is led by some incredibly visionary people. It's ploughing the way in front. Governments are realising that the social, economic cost of losing these landscapes is unacceptable. We need to bring about change, and I think with capital or without capital, people can, can help and should help. Not all of us have the means to become philanthropists, but TENT are keen to encourage any help, no matter the size. We're working with another charity now that's going to specialise in micro-donations. Change for Climate Change is a charity set up to channel funds using micro-donations into worthy foundations. Think of some of the big retailers in the UK that have 360 thousand transactions an hour. Imagine if you could tack a penny onto each one of those. If you have a penny, you can see the power that that, that amount of money can do. You know, there's room for everybody to participate in this, to, to feel good about what they're giving and uh, to make this planet considerably better off. This launch party is just the beginning of what will be a tough but ultimately essential fight to preserve this ancient wilderness. We've got to get our skates on. But we've got to change thinking in government, ch change thinking in Brussels. We've got to really get everybody on board. 
I hope that everyone's jazzed up about getting involved. Just that people get excited and get engaged and think, hey, I, I can get involved, I can do something. That, that's what has to happen. We are all um, here as um, tenants of this world and we have an obligation to leave it in a better state. We've really got to bang the drum and tell people how, you can, how man can really muck it up. It's certainly worth putting all we have in it because after all, <laughs> what else is there?